good afternoon everyone and thank you for coming in like sonali said that uh, uh, we will spend the next one hour trying to see how we can bring in some changes into the way we think i'm sure you will also have a lot of questions and uh, my request would be to keep on adding the questions in the chat box or raise your hands at the end of the seminar because let's let's let the flow continue and sonali and i will try to address as many questions as possible so quick background sonali yes gave me a, uh, uh, was kind enough to give me a, a fairly decent introduction so i found it uh, beyond red ocean consulting about uh, four years back before that i spent 25 years in industries across multiple geographies and multiple mncs in senior leadership companies the objective of setting up beyond red ocean consulting was uh, impacting organizations by transforming people that is the premise of our organization and uh, currently we work with business owners as as part of action coach we work with business owners and helping them transform themselves their people and their businesses we also work with a lot of uh, individuals and to see try and figure out how we can help them redesign their personal and professional goals and that is the theme for today so whether we are a business owner or whether we are uh, an individual the corona incidents covid 19 has ensured that the world will not be the same again sorry about that the world will not be the same again the world has changed permanently and one of the examples of the changing world is the way we are operating now about year uh, about month month and a half back when we were when we were planning to do these kind of events it would be all about seminars but today we are talking in terms of webinars and seeing how we can look at this changing world a quick background about what we were doing and it was in the late february early march i was talking to a lot of individuals talking to a lot of business owners for many of them 2019 was not a great year but come 2020 january things were looking bright people were looking up to the next 12 months next 15 months in case of business owners and february and march was the period that we were all working together not march sorry february january and february was the period that we were all looking at designing exponential growths individuals we were talking to individuals about how we can ramp up their careers business owners i was talking to many business owners and we were talking about where the investment should be brought in what kind of people would come in uh, what are the marketing strategies that we would implement how do we reorganize our businesses how do we bring in systems into the business and then comes first week of march by the time we were in the 5th or the 10th of march we realized that or we started realizing that things have changed and things are changing rapidly then we had the janta lockdown by that time lot a lot of maharashtra was already under shutdown other parts were shutting down or already shut down and then we had that 8 pm speech when we were told that the country would have a 100% lockdown till 14th of april and yesterday news has started coming up that multiple states including maharashtra west bengal orissa punjab already are going to extend that lockdown look at the timing end march 
when people are talking in terms of business plans, when people are talking of marketing strategies for next year, when people are talking in terms of new products next year, individuals are talking in terms of what is the kind of increment that they will get, what's the kind of promotions that they, that they will get. And everything, all of a sudden falls flat. I have a question. And my question is, we need to take a reality check about ourselves. And the question that I ask all of you, whether you're a business owner or an individual or a professional or part of a large corporate, do we have a plan for our life or are we living a life on a day-to-day -day basis? Are we unclear about our career slash business progression? Is financials, both from a business owner perspective, and, I've, and again, we talk to a lot of business owners about how their cash flows are getting affected, how they've been asked to pay their employees, but there's no money that they're making. There's a lot of uh, money that is stuck up in their inventory and with the, with the customers and who are not paying them. Are we worried about our financial situation? Are we burning ourselves out that health is becoming a big concern for all of us? Maybe not for the youth, not people at the age of 20s, but people like us who are on the other side of 50. And I'm not saying the wrong side of 50 because post 50 is beautiful. But people who have crossed 40, the stresses that we live in, the things that we do, is health going to be a concern? Is there any focus on our personal development? Even the last 14 days, 13, 14 days that we are at home, are we spending any time on personal development or is it the Netflix or the Amazon Prime or the hot stars that is going to make money out of us? Do we at some point in time feel that there is so much to be done, but we just don't seem to find the time and the resources to do it? For many of us, and including me, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll share my life story with you as well. For many of us, at some point in time, the answers to this question is, we are worried about our financial conditions. We are worried about our health. We are not in control of our personal development. We do not know where our businesses and careers are going. And we are living a life on a day-to-day -day basis. If that is so, and no harm in accepting that we are living a life on a day-to-day -day basis, it is probably the right time to redesign our lives. I I'm telling a lot of my business uh, owners, uh, coaches, clients that I work with and prospects that I work with. This lockdown is probably a blessing in disguise for all of us. It has given us time to step back and see where our life has gone. What have we done with our life? We all started our careers, whether as a business profession, business owner or, uh, or as a professional, with some personal goals and, and uh, professional goals in mind. And most of our professional goals are aligned to our personal goals. I wanted to do these things with my life. And hence, this is the sort of career that I selected. This is the kind of money that I need to make. This is the kind of house that I want to live. This is my aspirational car that I want to, uh, to drive. This is the amount of time and money and energy that I want to give for the underprivileged, the, social, the socially backward. Are we doing all those things? Or has it in the rut of living a life on a day-to-day -day basis, we've forgotten all about that. We've forgotten why we are on this planet. 
We've forgotten all about our dreams. We've forgotten all about our aspirations. Thank you, Ramani. Forgotten all about our aspirations. Let's look at life again. The next 40, 45 minutes that we are together, let's look at redesigning our life. The good news is that more people will make more money in the next 10 years than it has ever been made. And a lot of people to whom I talk, I talk in terms of how to thrive in your businesses. And, and I get such a, such a lot of flack for it. People come and tell me, sir, businesses thriving? Individuals ask me, sir, thriving? We have two options, my friends. One, to look at the other side of the hill and imagine a beautiful world, which is true, it is there. Or we can sit back today and crib. Nature has given us this time or is testing us, but nowhere it has been said that the world will go on a downswing. We were told about this downswing post World War II. We were told about this downswing after the dot com bust. We were told about this downswing after the terrorist attack in the US. We were told about this downswing after the financial crisis of 2008 2009. Yes, we took a dip. But from there on, people with the right goals and right mindsets have been able to make a lot of wealth and a lot of impact in their lives. Just to give you a brief history, the two billionaires in India with a combined wealth of $3.2 billion in the mid nineties. By 2012, and please understand, this is after two crises that hit, that, uh, three crises that hit us. The dot-com bust, the, uh, the terror attack, and the economic downturn. Three events that already happened in the, in the, next, in the, in the 15 years period. But the two billionaires in India had increased to 46 with a total net worth of $176 billion. Currently, we are at 119 billion dollars, 119 billionaires. We are the third after China and US. And by 2027, this is expected to, re to go up to 357. Whether it's 357 or 350 or 375 or 400, it's anybody's guess. But the numbers will be around that. And the point that I'm trying to address out here is there is money to be made. Are we looking at those opportunities, both as business owners as well as individuals? I just read an article, Mahindra and Mahindra, an automobile company, first went into making ventilators, and today they have announced that they are going to make hand sanitizers. Did they have the technology for it? They did not. Did, do they have the foresight? Yes, they have the foresight. United Spirits, of all companies, whom we are so fond of, many of us are so fond of, is going and making hand sanitizers. They're all looking at opportunities. It is said in business that in the, in the tears of some people lie the smile of others. Yes, some people are taking a big hit. But we need to look at how can we make a differential impact.
some people tell me that sir money where is the money but believe me this most successful people first generation not not uh, uh, family owned businesses most first generation people who have gone into businesses by the time of 40 they were broke so if you and i don't have money today welcome to the club we are broke so be it we don't have money so be it let's look at how we can go upwards from here because there's nowhere down to go we have gone we are at the we are at the bottom of wherever we should have been we have gone there warren buffet has made a statement that the most money that he has made it's after the age of 60. So we have a long way to go. And he's one of the richest persons on this planet. The universal law of success is the law of cause and effect. Everything that happens, happens for a reason. Success is not an accident. Failure is not an accident. If something is happening to us today, whether it's a financial crisis or a career crisis or a health crisis, we can always trace back and find the reason. And if we are honest with ourselves, the reasons will be absolutely there for us looking at our face and people will tell us this is the reason. That situation will tell us this is the reason. If you're in a financial crisis today, maybe we did not save enough money when we had the money. Maybe we spent too much money on unnecessary things. And the profound thing is that maybe we did not have a plan to with the money. We did not know what to do with the money. So cause and effect is natural. What we sow is what we reap. And we all know about ourselves. In whatever situation we are in, we are always in some sort of denial. And action coach tells us, one of the basic principles of business coaching and individual coaching of action coach is the bed and the ore model. There is a point of power and below that point of power is bed. B standing for blaming D standing for denial. We are very happy blaming others and we are very happy living in a world of denial. On the other hand, if, if we believe that my life is my own, then we should be above the point of power and we should be talking in terms of the ore. And how beautiful it has been, it has been acronym. O standing for ownership, A standing for accountability, and R standing for responsibility. There is no one on this planet who is going to help us live our life. The ownership is mine. The responsibility is mine. The accountability is mine. So if we take ownership, and if we have accountability for our life and we take full responsibility, we have the ore in our hand and there's nothing stopping us. Yes, there will be, there will be downturns like what we are facing today. But the downturn is not going to change the goal. Downturn may help us or may force us to change the, the route. But this crisis should not allow us to change our goal. And that can happen only if we have 
the core concept. Nature doesn't care. Nature is neutral. Nature doesn't care whether we are tall or dark, or tall or short, whether we are dark or fair, whether we are thin or fat, whether we are a man or a woman. Nature only cares. Are we doing it right? Nature is like justice. Nature is blind. If there are two cooks, two chefs, using the same proven recipe, exactly the way it was supposed to be made, the chances of both of them coming out with an equally good dish is very high. Our challenge is that we are always trying to reinvent the wheel. There are enough and more success stories on this planet whom we are not ready to follow. Because if we follow, and like lots of people, and a lot of us certainly read a lot of stuff, Success has left tracks behind. It is like the, sea for, uh, the, the seashore. There are tracks behind. We just need to walk through those tracks. And I'll help you today through processes of idealization and mind storming to help you design. It's again up to us whether you want to implement it or not. I learned it the hard way. And I don't want others to learn it the hard way. Just to digress, 2015, I was in Nigeria. Today, I'm facing Corona here. I was facing Ebola there. Businesses started shutting down. I was heading a project for setting up a hospital. Construction companies started backing out. Employees started backing out. We have seen this. I've seen this 25 years across multiple geographies, we have seen this. I've seen a lot of people, because I've been teaching for the last 20 years, I must have had 5,000 students. I've seen people not taking action, not following the footstep of success, trying to reinvent the wheel, and then coming out as failures. And then we blame that why should somebody else have more and I don't have that much? Success is there for all of us if we follow the proven recipes of success. The timelines can change. The timelines can change and success is not easy. If success was so easy, then there would be a lot more people successful on this planet. The successful people are only a few. The rest are trying to meet their ends meet. Please let us follow the rules of nature because nature doesn't distinguish. Have you heard of people who are very eager for a birthday party, for going out on a holiday, for going out on uh, meeting friends, for going out for a drink. They're all very eager to do those things. But do we really, but do we hear of people who are eager to have a better life, to earn more money, very rarely would you hear these kind of statements. When you are in conversation with your friends or relatives, there would be very little of eagerness being thrown around that how do we have a better life? How do we earn more money? It's not there. Because there's a difference between wish and desire. We all wish 
for certain things in life, but we don't desire for them so much. The desire has to move from that I want to achieve something to I will achieve something. That I want is a very dangerous word, dangerous phrase. That I want can be I want to become the prime minister of the country. I want to become the IMF head of uh, in in uh, in New York. I want to become the head of uh, World Economic Forum in Geneva. I want to become the president of US. The moment you write that want anywhere, please strike it off. And write if you want to achieve something, really want to achieve something, that I will achieve it. Because that I will is now converting that wish to a desire. And then I'll figure out how do I achieve it. That I will is a very powerful word. When you say I will, I will do it, the strongest of barriers move away from you. The moment you say I want, you will find thousand and one barriers standing in front of you, telling you how you, will, you cannot achieve it. For people who can see me, you will see a photograph behind me. That's of the Kanchenjunga. I can sit here and say I will climb Kanchenjunga. And the moment I say I will climb Kanchenjunga, I know and you guys know, you can write it down that I'll never climb Kanchenjunga in my life. Because it is not a desire. It is a wish. To change our mindsets, we need to change that I want to I will. Because true ambition is true desire. It is that small vo voice that tells us every single day that if I have a meeting tomorrow, I need to complete the preparation today. That's that, that something that tells us that get out of your couch, stop watching Netflix, stop chatting to your friends on, on WhatsApp, Get out of it and do it because you need to prepare for that uh, meeting tomorrow. If I need my children to have a better education, I need to start saving today. That voice will constantly tell us. But that bed, that denial stops us. It stops that small voice and says, shut up. I have better things to do in life by like looking at Facebook or looking at WhatsApp or looking at the movie on Netflix. If I need that better life tomorrow, I should work on it from today. If I, better, if I need a better life tomorrow, I should not start working on it from tomorrow. I should work it, on it from today. Because ambition which is true desire is that minute by minute, day by day mentality. You have to live in it every single moment of your life. <coughs> we need to have our default diaries in place. That accountability for every minute of our life. minute goes and I sit here do nothing the minutes have gone the moments have gone which are not going to come back and we are still where we are today if, if a successful life was easy most people in this life would be successful but there are some people who are constantly seem to be broke the money in their wallet doesn't last the month. The number of days outlast the wallet, the money in the wallet. While most of us are struggling to live our life, there's a small group of people who seem to have everything. Even in this world, they seem to have everything. Everything seems to be working out for them. So, what is the difference between that small group of people? And us. 
they have a true desire they have a true dream they are doers they are focusing on results life is ironic life seems to throw throw balls at us exactly when life is life is supposedly going normal like it has to, uh, hurt us today things were hunky dory going normal january february we were all happy and life has certainly thrown us this bomb and telling us deal with it people who have a long term focus will survive this period people who have been living on a day to day basis will struggle so having a long term focus is important and for that we need to have a mindset for success my emails are there my phone numbers which are whatsapp numbers are there for paucity of time i cannot run a psychometric assessment on your mindset but people who want to reach out to me please feel free i run psychometric assessments i'm a trained psych a psychometrist and the two kinds of mindsets that we talk in terms of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset many of you would know about it it's important to identify it it's important for us to identify what kind of uh, mindset we carry because becoming successful is not important what is important is to become that person that a successful person is if we are able to change that person within us nothing can stop stop us from being successful in action coach we use this concept of be do have be times do is have we all know what we want in life the haves i want that car i want that house i want that uh, phone i want that television i want that holiday i want i want so what i have want the have is i do but are we doing enough on the do bit to have it but more than that are we becoming that person who has to do that am i am i changing my mindset to becoming that person who should have that because life doesn't give us what we desire life gives us what we deserve so for that my mindset has to change my success mindset has to come in if we have to become successful i have to become a totally different human being if i am not successful as yet in life which means that what i have sowed has doesn't given me the result then i should sow something different to get different result i cannot be doing those same things again and again and expecting different results so if you want to achieve success you can't do those things that you have been doing today and achieve a different life so that mindset for success becomes important so once we have transformed that we then the question comes up of do and the stronger the we is suppose for example the have is 100 we have two options either that b which is i is 1 times do which is 100 will give me 100 which means i have to do 100 different things 100 different ways to achieve that 100 but if the b himself transforms the mindset transforms to 10 then he has to do only 10 things that is the difference between that small group of people and the large group of people who are failures the small group being, being successful they have increased their b 
so they ha don't have to do too many do's to get what they have, to get what they want. Change your mindset. The first step of changing the mindset is the statement which has to become your buzzword. And that buzzword is life is planned backwards and led forward. At whatever age you are in today, do you know what you want to become, say, 10 years from now? And this is an example that an activity that you guys can do at home. Or you can you can ask me. Suppose I meet, suppose I meet a lady called a gentleman called Mr. Ramani. And I meet him 10 years from now. I know everything about him. And I meet him and I take him to a place where nobody knows him. But I know a lot of people. How would I introduce him? This is Ramani. Ramani is known for Dash. He has, Ramani has accomplished Dash. If you want to talk to Ramani about something, Talk to him about, him about Dash. This three fill in the blanks. If you do today, or you start doing today, because it will not happen overnight. Change is not overnight. But if you do today, your life in the next one year can have a huge transformation. People have come and told me that, sir, that ex ex exercise that we did has transformed me. Because now I know what I want to become. Again, my life story, 2016, 2016, yeah, 31st July, was my last day of my professional career. Worked in MNCs, senior leadership positions. A hefty paycheck. Gave it all away. 1st August, 2 a.m. in the morning. I still remember the time because I looked at my watch. And I was sweating. I was sweating for the simple reason that on 31st of July, I had given away my fixed income. But I had a dream. I had a dream to fulfill because I knew what I wanted to do here. And this is not my development. This has been taught to me. My mentor taught this to me. I got up sweating. I said, what about tomorrow? What about that EMI? What about that car EMI? What about the driver's salary? What about the maid's salary? From where will it come? But believe me, after five years, they've come. They've come. We have sustained. We are growing only because we had that single minded focus that I the founder of Beyond Red Ocean Consulting will impact organizations by transforming people, whether it's individuals, whether it is professionals in organizations through the executive coaching route, or whether it's business owners. I will do it. Look at yourself and plug these in, and you realize the transformation that has happened in your life. The next step is. Dream big dreams. My suggestion is take a book, take a writing pad, or take a spiral bounded book, better. Write down all those big dreams that you have. Imagine you have no limitations in life. Two years from now, three years from now, how much would you be earning? Where would you be living? What would your family look like? What would your family, what would you be driving? What car would you be driving? Where, would, where are all those places you would be holidaying? You can keep on adding questions. What is the social impact I, that I would bring in? How many children would I be uh, supporting in their education? How many elderly citizens would I be supporting? 
if i just had that magic wand today and by waving and i achieve everything in life what would that life look like just dream big without any second thoughts whether i can do it or i can't do it whether i have the capabilities to do it or i don't have the capabilities to do it everything will fall in place once you have made up your mind this is what we call the process of idealization keep a diary keep a spiral book keep on adding you are reading a newspaper you like something write it down i want this create your dream board use pictorials put it up on your wall and say one year i want this five years i want this because you have to change your mindset you have to change the small talk that you are having with your mind constantly and most of the most of the minds or most of the talk that we are having with our mind at most times is a negative talk we need to get out of that look at that process of idealization it should look like a chill child's christmas list or whatever list you might talk about the diwali list or a, or a holiday list you just let it run wild don't have any blockages in your mind saying should i can i will i no questions don't think or think can i do it uh vivek the topic of the session was change your mind change your life in the post covid era agreed but this are purposes of life i have not i have not forgotten about the post covid era i'm sorry vivek if i'm disappointing you and this has not been made from a perspective of given the post covid pre covid era we are talking in terms of finding your purposes in life we are talking in terms of changing your mindsets we are talking in terms of how do you bring in positivity into your mind rather than negativity you need to find the main purpose in life and the main purpose in life is that we are all genetically tuned to to be good at something when we identify that something that it is good at it gives us energy it gives us motivation in hearing a few comments coming up on the chat box that is this relevant in this post covid era it is all very relevant if we have worked our life through a purpose how does the covid era affect us it's only a matter of time if the purpose in our life was something else then covid era certainly affects us this will if we are focused on what we need to do life will always have a crisis and life is always have challenges like brian tracy once said life is full about challenges 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 and crisis we are in that crisis so either we are in a challenge or in a crisis are we going to be hung up on that or are we going to look at what is our purpose do we need to change our business that we are doing do we need to change our profession that we are doing if we have to identify that it's good to go back to that phase which was 7 to 12 years when we were 7 to 12 years and find out what you love to do in life you will realize that what you what you love to do in life is something that is 
going to drive you going forward. Check for yourself whether in this era, with the stresses, with the challenges, we are doing what we are doing, or do I need to realign my business? Okay. Once you have your dream list ready, and once you have your purpose in life ready, whether it is the same old purpose that you had and you've decided you will work through that same purpose or you have a different purpose in life, you may need to commit to excellence. We need to commit to be the best in life. Everyone who is at top 10% today was at the bottom 10% at some point in time. Are we ready to make those sacrifices which will take us to the top 10%? Our commitment to excellence in everything that we do is critical to our well being. Let's talk about a program that globally is run, not by me. This is not my program but we use this with our coaching clients. And this is a program that we call the mind storming. Take a piece of paper, any piece of paper, take any piece of paper and write down 10 goals that you need to achieve in the next 10 months. Post COVID, like somebody said. What are those 10 goals that I need to achieve in the next 10 months? I know we are going through a downturn. I know financially we have been hit. As business owners, we have been hit. But what are those 10 goals, either personal or professional or a mix of both? What are those 10 goals that I need to achieve in the next 10 months? Of which, of that 10, which is that one goal if done well, can transform my life. Is it stopping something that I'm currently doing? Or is it going and doing something new? What is that one goal that would transform our life totally? Take that same paper, turn it around, on top of the page, write that one goal. And now start taking actions about achieving that goal. When we talk, start taking actions, and most of us are professionals out here, whether owning our businesses or working for somebody else, we are all professional failures. Time and again, because of controllable factors, because of uncontrollable factors, we have failed. Nine things of the 10 that we did, we did not succeed. And one of the reasons for not even succeeding is the fear of failure. Ask any mother, any mother in the room, ask that mother, ask your spouses, ask your wives, what is the time that you would have given your child to walk? And the mother would have laughed at me and said, time? What time? The child will try till he succeeds. The child will crawl. He will get up. He will fall. He will get up. He will fall. He'll get up. He'll fall. But one day he will succeed. So whatever we are trying to do, we have to refuse to consider the possibility of failure. Even today, even in the post-COVID era, we have to refuse to consider the possibility of failure. The goals that we set for ourselves are sacrosanct. The ways could, could change. Like ways for us has changed. I do a lot of teaching sessions online. Business schools were refusing to go online. Today, they're forced to go online. My wife is a school teacher. They are teaching their kids online. 
the end goal has to happen. We may struggle, we'll fail, but let's not try to even, let's not even stop trying. <clears throat> Let us make that effort to make it happen. Because failure at some point in time will show us multiple opportunities for success. A lot of us in the last two months would be struggling. We feel that we have failed. We do not know where will our careers will go. We do not know where our businesses will go. But step back, my friends, and look at ourselves, and we will figure out there are 500 different opportunities for success. We need to find our way for success. We have no option. We cannot sit back and cry and crib because of an uncontrollable factor. The only thing that we can control is what we can do, not what is happening in the external world. If we have to look at our cash flow, so be it. If we have to delay our EMI, so be it. If we have to work with our vendor, so be it. If we have to cut down costs, so be it. If you have to launch newer products, so be it. If you have to stop some other products, so be it. If six months from now, we have to shed go of a few people, so be it. We have to take those actions. Because the business is sacrosanct. Our life is sacrosanct. Our goals are sacrosanct. One of the reasons why we are not successful in whatever we do, and we find this 500 different reasons to complain, is because we are not committing ourselves to lifelong learning. Even today, life has given us so many opportunities to upskill ourselves. And, and research has shown that the current knowledge has a half-life of two years. If you're not getting better today, we are getting worse. So let's look at ourselves. Are we getting better today? The last 15 days that we spent together, that we have spent in a lockdown, are we getting better today? Remember, the month has 100 hours, 100 hours of upskilling. Every single day, we can give ourselves three hours for upskilling. The top business owners in the world, top professions in the world read 100 books in a year. They follow this. Because there's so much available out there which can help us upskill. And finally, before we conclude, See ourselves as self-employed always I am responsible for my life there's no one else coming to save me even if someone else is signing your check think of yourself as self-employed if something goes wrong with the organization it should hurt it should hurt me very badly if we don't like what we are getting, it means we are putting something down wrong. We need to correct it. And in most cases, it's our mindset. Every situation has an opportunity for learning. Every moment in this world gives us an opportunity. Can we look at that? To conclude, That sheet of paper that you had, which you had written one goal on top that would transform your life, take that piece of paper again today. Forget how the day has passed, how yesterday has passed. Just take that piece of paper again today. And write down 20 things, minimum 20 answers to how you would achieve that goal today. 20 answers. Force yourself to write 20. The first five will be easy. Whether it's your business or whether it's your personal life, whether it's your career, anything. The first five will be easy. The second five will be tough. The third five will be tougher. And you will really struggle 
to come with the last five options. From 16 to 20 would be really tough. But if when we look at those 20, 15, 16 to 20, those five options that you have put up, the moment you uh, uh, start implementing them, you will see your life has transformed, your goals have transformed, your businesses have transformed. And this works in every situation, in every pace of our life, in every sphere of our life, in every every area of our life. We try to achieve the easy things. Easy things will give us those little results. The difficult things, which is that 16 to 20, will give us exponential results. Mindstorming is, a, is something that works phenomenally if we put our heart to it. The idealization is important. Because we need to know where we are going. Mindstorming will help you achieve those goals. Those 20 things that you have done, pick up those first, last five. Pick any one of them and start taking an action every day. 30 actions in the next 30 days to achieve that will give you awesome results. Whether it's your sales or marketing function in your organization, when we talk about sales and marketing under Action Coach, we talk in terms of having 75 strategies. And I ask any business owner, how many strategies are you implementing? He says, sir, not more than three. What is the ROI of each of those strategies? Sir, we don't know, we don't measure. There can be so many things that can be done. Measure the actions. Measure where your energy and your money is going. The more you commit to becoming the best person that you are, the more you will like yourself and respect yourself. This time, the COVID era, has given us all the opportunity to change, to alter our belief systems, to create new perspective that challenge a person's character and will teach him or her on how to become a happier person and a wiser person. When things are good, we, we forget about our changing our belief systems. We forget about getting the new perspectives. We forget about challenging our own character because life is good, life is hunky-dory. This time has given us that opportunity. So let's use this opportunity to change for the good. If someone says in three years from now there will be, not an, there, there will be no other tragedy which will come up, I think we don't know. Maybe we are too optimistic that whatever age we are in in the next 20 years another three such challenges will come and the mindset that we that we develop today will help us achieving or overcoming those mindsets les brown one of those famous speakers globally has said you don't don't get what you want in life you get who you are. So if you change that B, the do's will happen and the haves will come. Just leave you with a last slide. I know change is tough. Post COVID, pre, during the COVID corona era, this is tough. Our mindsets have all gone for a toss. We look at our bank accounts and we struggle. We look at our careers, we don't know where it's going. But please try to change work on your mindsets. It is a God-given time that, it has, that he has given us. Change our mindset. We may not want to do it. And when we start working on that process, we feel that we should not have done it. It's too painful. Changing is painful. 
But once we complete the change process, it's really beautiful. The world is a beautiful place. There's so many opportunities. Please keep positivity in your mind. In four months from now, if we ever happen to meet again, we will talk about all the positives that are there in this world. Thank you so much, guys. Sonali, I'm open to questions. Thank you so much for such a wonderful session, sir, and for sharing your valuable insights. Um, we'll just go to the Q&A section now. Yeah. So there are two main questions. One is by Mr. Nikhil Agar Agarwal. He says, citing m, &M example, they have manpower, supply chain, and cash reserves to take calculated risk of going yes, into sir. ventilators and sanitizers. What is our way uh, ahead as MSME? So even in an S, uh, MSME or an SME sector, we have to look at whatever business we are in. We could be like, I, I'll give you an example. I was, I was coaching a uh, client who, is, who has a restaurant business. And he came and told me, said the restaurant business has shut down. What can we do? People are not coming. But we have to look at opportunities. So can we change the model into a takeaway model? How can we keep on engaging our clients and create programs, cooking sessions? So we have started working on cooking sessions. And through Zoom, we are doing cooking sessions. He's charging a nominal 500 rupee for three items. But we are doing it. So in an SME, MSME sector, also we will look at opportunities. Whichever sector we are in, how are we aligning to the current businesses? Nikhil, we can have a detailed conversation depending on the business that you are in and how can you open the flanks up, right? Yes, Mahindra and Mahindra and Reliance and whoever has, uh, has huge uh, balances, cash balances and people. But yes, I'm sure you will find your way as well. Perfect, sir. Uh, so the next question is by Mr. K.K. Chauhan. He says, globally, everyone, be it individual or business, has the same impact of COVID-19. So where is the big issue to restart for everyone from the same level? Your views on this. We need, we don't have to. Thank you, sir. Mr. Chauhan, you said, right? Yes, sir. So you don't have to start from the same level. What I'm trying, what I'm saying out here is, relook at your business model. Relook at all that you're doing today. And Mr. Chahan, you can share me your email ID. I just did a blog on what can you do on changing your business models or relooking at your business models. If your business is aligned to that current situation, and look at FMCG companies, they're, they're, they're going all over the place, right? Pharma companies are going all over the place. Like somebody right, uh, mentioned out here, a cloth manufacturing company is getting into making uh, masks. So we have opportunities there. You need not go back to zero. I am asking every one of you is please relook at your personal and professional goals and see whether they're aligned. Go and check whether what you, the reason you set up the business when you set up the business when you did are still valid or the reasons have changed. And he continues by saying, what happens to risk assessment techniques currently being practiced in this pandemic? A lot of risk assessment techniques that are being, that are being used. The first is, as a business owner, I think we need to look at our cash flows. And uh, like we talked to a few of our clients and we have said that break down this cash flow into three different baskets. One is your operational cash flow, money that you need for a day-to-day -day basis. Second is your repayment of debt. How can you now work with your, with your, uh, with your investors or finances into the repayment of the debt? Go into your functional cash flow and ask your employees whether they will take a deferred salary, a part of it. If yes, you can push that back. And the third is your investment cash flow. So you need to have a risk management tool, risk mitigation tool for all of this. You need to step back and ask five questions to yourself. Is this the way I would continue my business? Will these be the same people that I would hire if I was starting the business afresh? 
will this the, will these be the products that i would uh, um, continue to manufacture how would i go back and talk to my sales um, uh, my customers how would i keep on engaging them knowing that they, the world has changed and my sales people will not be able to change, uh, will not be able to meet them on a regular basis and fifth how am i going to upskill my sales uh, people specifically into working in the new world when it whenever it restarts that's great sir i think all the other questions are based on a similar uh, similar questions that we have answered previously so uh, we can wrap up the session now uh, to everyone if you have any individual so questions sorry sir i i have just putting in my email ids and phone and whatsapp numbers so you can reach out to me in case anybody has any independent questions Thank you, Deepak. Thank you so much. Thank you, Raj. Thank you, Manju. Thank you so much, everyone. Are you able to see Hello, the Q and A? Okay, Q and A. Sorry, sir. Hitendra, I would request you to just send me a email or a text with your email ID. Yes, we can create a pitch for the investors for funding. We can change that malak. Puldeep, thank you very much for joining. Hitendra, kindly WhatsApp me. Adindam, we can talk about at length about your modular furniture business. What are the three things that you should look at when you're starting? And uh, on on business X, can I make a make my last comment, uh, yes, Sonali? Yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, as part of Action Coach, as part of Action Coach, we are because of this COVID era, we are offering free pro bono. business coaching sessions for five business owners so please write to me and we can get into conversations because we all know we are going through difficult times right you can write to me and that holds true for any life coaching as well which i which i do so please write to me three business coaching sessions and three life coaching sessions for five business owners and five individuals that is my gift from this session Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, for thank you Seema. Time. We hope we were able to add some value to your lives through this session. Thank you so much, and thank you so much, sir, for your valuable time as well. Thank you. And thank you so uh, much. sorry, Sonalis. Satya, we will speak about the PSU at length because it's a different ball game altogether. But please connect with me, and we'll speak about it. Itendra, please send me a WhatsApp. and and i will start registering you have my number so nali thank you very much please thank connect you. with me on email and whatsapp and we will take this forward so nali thank you very much thank thank you for your moderation thank you thank you uh to everyone who needs a recording for the session please uh, reach out to me and i will be happy to share the same thank you so much and we'll see you in our next webinar it's on 16th of april and it's about the impact of covid-19 on the retail industry So if you need any further details about that then please reach out to me as well. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day ahead. Thank you sir. Have a Thank you very much. Bye bye.